and if behavior were fixed, we'd still be living in caves. We couldn't learn how to drive a car. We couldn't alter our patterns. Fortunately, people grow up, get old, and die, and that gives a new generation a chance for newer responses to the environment. By responses, I mean reactions. What do you get in the environment is a reaction. If you've been brought up as a baby with bears and lions, all tame, and you go into the woods, you'll be torn to pieces if you use that reaction system. If you're brought up with wolves and lions and elephants, all tamed, and you walk into the jungle, you won't live very long with that attitude. But no one can know except the reaction they get. Is that clear? I was told that a rattlesnake has rattles on the tail and they move to warn you. They don't move to warn you. They move, period. A rattlesnake doesn't know to warn you he's going to bite. That's his reaction to you and it makes noise. All snakes' tail move. Did you know that? When they see people, whether it's rattles there or not. The normal person projects the rattles are there to warn you. Or an animal looks hideous or has patterns that look like eyes to scare you. They have some animals that have circles on the back of their head. And they say the purpose of that is so that if something approaches from the rear, they'll think it's eyes. They don't think about those things. Knowing the difference between human projection and human reactions. That's why love would be impossible. The actions that generate love 200 years ago are not the same as they are today. So a person says, do you think there's enough love in the world? I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think they know. If they say, do you feel that People are being oriented to their environment. I know what they're talking about. I say, do you think love will prevail? I don't think they know what they're talking about. Love, do they mean extending maximum courtesy to people regardless of the person? Well, that would be ridiculous. You can't have a word like love without defining what you mean by it. If by love you mean greeting everyone fairly, and then doing a survey, asking, how can you relate to that person? After that survey, you say, I might be able to relate to them in three months if they listen. You don't know that. So you try. You, what you do is you manipulate variables in language and the environment. If it works, you take it on. If it doesn't work, you can either get mad at the person, depending on your reaction, or you can say, uh, the person doesn't have enough to close that, to understand what I'm talking about. Um, when a child says, I love my mommy, if mommy, if the child notices that mommy feeds her, washes her, prevents her when she gets injuries, takes care of her, she associates love with mom's devotion to her needs. When a guy says to a girl, I love you, she says, what have you done to prove that? She doesn't say that. What are you, what are you, how do you manifest that? When a guy says to a girl, I love you very much, more than anything in the world, more than my life itself, the girl might be flattered, but he said nothing. Now, if a person says, how can I meet your needs? Well, if he's a Nazi, he said, go out and kill some Jews. You'd be meeting his needs. But is meeting another person's needs love? Not necessarily. Love is not only meeting their needs, but giving them tools to fulfill their needs. Do you know what that means? Like you prepare that drink because you feel it's nourishing, more nourishing than other systems. Okay. Now, if a person drinks that and has a very negative attitude, that will not nourish the person. 
Now let me tell you again, if you're born with a good brain, high quality tissue, all the neurons in place, everything there is good, it has no mechanism, remember, for knowing that which is relevant. The brain doesn't know anything until it experiences something. Like a certain bird with checkerboard pattern, when it lands on you, then it pecks at your skin and hurts you. Then you stay away from birds with checkerboard pattern. But you can't inherit that knowledge, like look at the bird and stay away from it without experience. You can't walk a tightrope unless you get on something and try to balance yourself over a long period of time. If you use a long bamboo pole, there's a thing called inertia. A bamboo pole doesn't flex as fast as you do, so you can do this and maintain stability with a long pole. And then you can shorten the pole, and that'll give you more and more experience in balancing. There are some people that learn to balance faster than others. That is the structure of the semicircular canal of the ear and physical structure can give you a propensity toward learning to balance a little faster than the other guy. I don't know if you understand that. Propensity means if you have two normal eyes, one has half the quality of vision as the other, you become asymmetric. You know what I mean? If they're symmetric, you stand a better chance. If the brain is clean, meaning has no toxins in it, your response to the environment will not be based on the cleanliness of the brain, but the tribe you're brought up with. If they say Moses is angry or Loeb did this or that, that's, that's using the brain well, if it corresponds to the environment. But you can't study anything apart from the environment. Can you understand that? Any problem with that? If you say, use your head, a person, you're telling them to use tools they don't have, is what you're saying. Use your head, think about it. Well, that doesn't tell them anything, unless you give them tools. They don't know what tools are, so you have to show them what tools are. Somebody wanted a bullet once that travels around the corner, when you fire a gun and go around the corner. So he shaved one end of the bullet so it had, it was asymmetric, instead of even, one side was shaved so the wind turned the bullet around. If the gun, if it didn't rotate, you understand? If the bullet rotates, that doesn't do that. So an inventive mind is not an inborn process. It's a person with a hell of a lot of tools and that ask questions that are relevant. How can I make a bullet turn? I don't know. If your boat is asymmetric, not uniform, oddly shaped, to point to one side, it'll go around in circles if you make a boat like that. Do you understand? How big should a rudder be on an airplane? Nobody knows. They build an airplane and the rudder's too small and it doesn't work too well, so they make it larger. Sometimes they make it too large. Just finding the right size, meaning the best size for that plane, is called research. I don't know. A person that doesn't know anything would be a metaphysician because they make assumptions. It's all right to make assumptions as long as you know these are my assumptions or I'm speculating. Now, the scientists that are trying to find out what is the universe. Is the universe saying, I was reading uh, that guy, what was his name? Uh, you know, uh, Kurzweil? Kurzweil? Kurzweil, yeah. He gets off in the middle of the book and he says, does the universe, is the universe intelligent? Now what the hell does that mean? Is the universe intelligent? He's trying to say that the universe may have a built-in program to evolve. He may be saying that. But if planets explode and they're all different distances and they wobble, I don't know what he means by uh, does evolution have 
an end goal. Even if evolution did, say evolution makes a man more neural associations, it has nothing to do with real value because it only has to do with that organism. Do you know what that means? If your brain evolves and your eyes become more efficient, in relation to what? So how can you say the universe is evolving or becoming intelligent except in relation to something? If you don't know what that means, if the universe suddenly said the sun is too bright, we don't need that much sunlight for the amount of trees on earth and the sun dimmed down because it doesn't need all that burst of light, then you can say uh, the conservation of energy is, seems to be built in. In some areas it does exist, in other areas it does not exist. They say that the earth, when it spins, wobbles a little. Wobbles, meaning doing that. And someday it will wobble more than others. So, is there a purpose to the wobble? No, but there's a cause to the wobble. Not a purpose. Always a cause to the wobble. You know what that means? They say that planets explode. Well, if you live one billionth of a second, no planet ever explodes. Do you know what that means? The higher you go on an airplane, waves move. The higher you go, the smaller they become and more still it appears. You can't see waves six miles up. All you can see is patterns in the ocean that look frozen. The closer you get, the more fluid. So, uh, what is the true nature of things? That's not the question. What is your response to nature? Is the question. Do you know what that means? What is your range of response to nature? You can't see a bacteria wagging its little tail. So all your books on life has to do with your receptors, not what's around you. If you wrote a book on the absolute truth, it would be a ridiculous book because absolute truth freezes things. This is the truth. Waves don't move, they're stationary. Well, from high altitude, yes. If you live one billionth of a second, lightning would be fixed like a photograph. You wouldn't see it go down. So you can see you experience change. Uh, they say that, I don't know how true it is, but certain types of insects see faster than we do. They can see a grain of sand fall. We don't. We just see an impact. Uh, probably a magnetometer can sense radio waves. We can't. So man builds instruments if he wants to know those things. But the primitive man just looks at the world and grins. He, has, he doesn't look at an airplane and say, how does that damn thing fly? He has no curiosity except he'll look at it and uh, with his primitive tools. But he can't say they've really advanced that, the people that made that. They have an advanced way of thinking. Do you understand? He can't say that. Now, you might see a person brought up in this culture going to church on Sunday. They're just as primitive as the headhunters of the Amazon. Do you understand that? All right. I also mentioned many times that Indians take turkey feathers or big feathers and make a hat. And if you point it out, that dancing around the fire with that hat does absolutely nothing. They do not remove the hat and say thank you for being so extensional. Do you understand that? Okay. Are they bad? No. Are they mean? No. They're riding existing paths. Their brain has a road right through it. It's as rigid as any other road. And they're riding that path. That's why when a person says, let's be reasonable, they're trying to superimpose experience with three words. Let's be reasonable. It can't be reasonable. You can learn to be reasonable. More so. 
You know what that means? Or may I have your attention? You can only have the attention they can give you. Do you know what that means? When you, when an officer walks into an army tent, they say, attention, meaning he's about to say something, which you have to listen for. All you guys have to be at point A at four o'clock. Well, that's behavioral manipulation with few words. Yes.